Hey guys, this is Mecca. Welcome to part one of my Fire Emblem Pitfall series, where I'll be talking about things that Fire Emblem players tend to do that might seem like a good idea, but actually are not. First, a disclaimer, I am not here to tell you how to play your single player game. Do whatever you'd like to do. People who have seen my posts on the Fire Emblem subreddit or have heard my commentary on Donlon's 0% growth videos might think that I'm some kind of LTC fanatic. You might think that I'm making these videos to sound smart and talk down casual players, but that's not what I'm about. I've actually never finished an LTC playthrough in my life, and when I play Fire Emblem, I often disregard turn count completely. My most recent run is an FE6 playthrough with turn counts in the 50s per chapter. So the point is, I don't care how other people play, just enjoy yourself. But if you feel like you might not be playing as well as you could, and you would like some ideas to improve, this video is just for you. The reason I'm doing this video is because I see a lot of the same advice pop up in various FAQs, comment sections, or playthroughs, and I disagree with some of that advice. And because some of these are things that I used to do myself, and I sometimes still do, because I can't help myself, I think it can relate to these mistakes. Now, Fire Emblem games are generally easy enough to beat, even when you're not playing perfectly, especially on lower difficulties, but I do think there is enough depth to them to where you can outplay them. Like, you can play at a higher level and challenge yourself. And I think it's rewarding to play it well, to outsmart the game and make things easier on myself. It's a good feeling. So with that out of the way, let's start with number one. Number one on the list is hoarding. Let's say you're playing Fire Emblem and you find a very powerful item with a limited amount of uses. A lot of players will opt to try their hardest not to use that item, even when it would be beneficial. I could kill this guy in one round using a killing edge, or I can take a little longer and use an iron sword and then I'll have my killing edge later. Or you find a pair of speed wings and you're like, well, I could make someone faster with this now, but what if I get a character later that really needs them? Hoarding is something I'm convinced that all RPG players do. It's natural, you want to keep your options open for later, and you don't want to waste anything you don't need. And while I don't think you should be using Rutger's Killing Edge on every bandit you see in Chapter 5, Fire Emblem tends to be generous enough with weapons to the extent that you can use them when the need arises. If there's a strong enemy you want to get rid of, break out those strong weapons. For example, Chapter 14 of Fire Emblem 7 has a lot of enemy cavaliers. The easiest way to deal with them is to have Hector use the Wolf Bill. There's just no reason to be stingy with its uses. It gets rid of those cavaliers quickly, so they're less of a threat. Now later on you won't need the wolf deal as much. In the early game of Awakening, especially on harder difficulties, your only option to do a lot of damage with one attack is Frederick's Silver Lance. Without using it, you're not going to be beating these chapters. Clearly the designers intended for you to use the thing and still be fine later, so go ahead and do it. Lots of Fire Emblem maps are very large and have a ton of enemies to go through as well as some long winding corridors or terrain that forces you to go all the way around. So save yourself the headache as well as some time and just use one or two warp statues to take a shortcut. Unless the weapon is at very very low uses, if you're thinking to yourself, is it worth using this now? The answer is generally yes. At number 2 we have not using pre-promotes. Early game in Fire Emblem you generally have two ways to deal with enemies. You can either sick three different characters on one of those annoying bandits, or you can just have your pre-promotes pal then do it in one round. But man, that guy only gets like 5 EXP. Surely someone else needs that more, right? As you can expect from someone who has seen and done many 0% uh, growth playthroughs, I don't think this is the case. It's perfectly fine to have your Frederick or Seth or whoever. Take a couple kills here and there and make things easier. Going back to the example of FE7 chapter 14, the other easiest way to deal with the onslaught of Cavaliers is to have Marcus kill them. It makes the map so much easier, so why not do it? The key is to think of them not as black holes of experience, but as units that come with roughly 2,000 free experience of their own, as well as a free promotion item that they can only use on themselves. Would you like a gift horse in the mouth and let that all go to waste? If your style or friends or Kent came pre-promoted, would you say they're worse or better? Would you want to use them less just because they're stronger? Note that pre-promoted units do not magically eat up the XP that your other units would have gotten. If I'm using 5 units and I'm dividing my XP over them equally, does it really make a difference for the other four if one of them is a pre-promote? Of course not, they still get their fair share. I get it, you want a balanced team, so by all means, feed kills to those other units. Lots of Fire Emblem titles encourage this by making early game pre-promotes a lot weaker in the long term, most notably in the speed department. But that doesn't mean you should feel bad about using them when they're at their best, and it definitely doesn't mean you shouldn't use monsters like Titania and Seth in the long term. Terminating the deployment of the likes of Frederick, FE12, Aaron, and FE6 Marcus is of course more understandable, but please do make use of them when they're still your best character. 
I consider it a boon of these preper modes that you can afford to not give them kills and still be very powerful. If you were to divide 10 kills amongst these 5 units mentioned before, but you decide your preper mode is strong enough so you give his kills to another, your other units are benefiting from having a preper mode unit on their team. Had that preper mode unit been an unpromoted one, that unit would have had to take those kills for themselves. Again, your preper modes come with free EXP, that's a good thing. I can kind of understand the hesitation in not using early game pre promotes, because they almost seem to be too good to be true, but no one should hold reservations about mid game or late game pre promotes. I get that it can be more fun to build a unit from the ground up and watch them grow into a powerhouse, but try not to underappreciate the value of a promoted unit that joins battle already. Even if you're not going to be using them all game long, it can't hurt to use a character like FE7, Isadora, Hawkeye, or Veda. With some exceptions, pre promotes tend to not turn into the same powerhouses as growth units, and that's fine, you can't have something for nothing. But in some games, enemy stats, particularly speed, are so low that you can still get use out of these experienced folks without slowing down your army. Personally, I think a pre-promoted unit that drops off in usefulness is better than a growth unit that needs to go through a longer period of babying in order to even become tolerable. At least the former doesn't have to be deployed when they're no longer in their prime, but to get to the good part of the growth unit, you have to put up with their weaknesses. Number 3 is promoting at level 20. A question I often see on the subreddit is, when should I promote this unit? Should I promote them now? And whether you should or not is highly dependent on which game you're playing. In FE4, for example, there is no reason not to promote, ever. In Awakening of Fates, you have seals to reclass and reset the level, so these games are a different kind of worlds altogether. The points I'm raising here are mostly for games with no infinite leveling. A lot of people would say, you should only promote when the character is at max level. After all, if you promote at say level 10 or level 15 as opposed to level 20, you're wasting 5 or 10 possible levels. Why would you want your character to have less levels under their belt at the end of the game? And these are levels in their unpromoted state, so they should be gained at a quicker rate than promoted levels. But now let's look at the advantages of promoting early. It makes your unit a lot more powerful a lot sooner. The promotion gains alone amount to about 3 to 5 level ups that you're making use of much sooner. Not to mention access to new weapon types or more movement. In some games, like the GBA and Tellius games, promoting uncaps the weapon rank, so that unit can build their main weapon rank again. Some units, like FT6 Rupture, will uncap their speed and skill, otherwise stuck at 20, making their post-promotion level ups better than any pre-promoted levels. So promoting earlier has both short and long-term benefits. And are you really missing out on those 5 to 10 levels? Unless you're playing at a very slow pace, routing every map including reinforcements, or perhaps a boss or arena abusing, chances are your character wasn't going to make it to promoted level 20 anyway. It depends on which Fire Emblem you're playing, but usually my characters don't max the level, even in the final chapter. And if they do, it's for a very brief period of time anyway. As for the rate at which characters gain EXP, and again this depends on the game, the Fire Emblem EXP formula tends to roughly equalize high level unpromoted units and low level promoted ones. The difference can be as little as 1 EXP per battle, or even be non-existent. There's even games where promoting can actually accelerate your EXP gain. Even if all of these arguments do not persuade you, you should consider this. Are these short-term benefits you get from promoting really worth passing up over maybe 1 or 2 extra levels at the end of the game? As you might have guessed, this applies to pretty much all the points raised so far. Players tend to emphasize potential long-term min-maxing. I don't want to use my Jagan because my other characters might need the EXP. I don't want to promote my mage because it'll have less levels later on. I don't want to use my speed wings because what if I end up needing them, but we're playing Fire Emblem. You should have plenty of everything later on. That's going to be it for part 1. Originally I did not intend for these to be split, but I decided to keep this around the 10 minute mark to make it a bit more accessible. And this will also give you viewers more opportunity to provide some feedback. If you were watching this and you thought this was helpful or at least interesting, please do let me know, for example on Reddit or in the comment section. Or if not, I'd like to know that too. I know the voiceover audio quality isn't the most optimal, sorry about that, but if there's anything else I can do to improve, please tell me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in part 2.